Today I'm going to show you how to replace the Hilo gear in an MH28mm. This is also applicable to the BF20 and the G0704 which appear to have virtually the same setup. To replace the gear you'll need these tools. You may also require some spare bearings depending on whether you damage them removing them. The press is made up of the following parts. Two pieces of square hollow section with holes drilled in them and two lengths of threaded rod. A piece of steel rod with a small center turned on it and a slug of steel turned to press the bearing back in and fit over the shaft. Before you start disconnect the power from the wall. The first step is to remove the motor cover. Then the cap head screws securing the motor mounting plate can be removed along with disconnecting the power connection to the motor. Ensure you take note of which colored wires are terminated together. There may also be a speed sensor which needs removing, as there was in my case. Now the motor and motor mounting plate can be lifted off. Take care to remove the wires threaded through the plate. We now reach the sacrificial gear. If this gear is stripped, then this may be as far as you need to go. As this one's in good condition, continue on and remove the circlip and lift the gear off. Underneath an internal circlip securing the bearing needs removing. At this point we need to rotate the head, so loosen the bolts that allow the head to rotate. These are located in the bottom of the casting. Take care not to loosen these too much as it will make it more difficult to control the head as you rotate it. With the head rotated, a small access hatch is exposed on the rear of the machine. This provides access to the high-low gear. As you can see the low gear is missing all its teeth. Now ensure the high-low gear is set in the neutral position. Then remove the high-low knob. This is secured with a small set screw in the side of the knob. There are also two ball bearings and a spring that will come out from under it. Next remove the set screw securing the shifter and the two screws that are under the shifter knob. This will then allow the shifter mechanism to be removed. These are the shifter parts that were located within the casting. Next we need to get access to the high-low gear shaft in the bottom of the casting. This may mean removing the light as in my case. Next we can set up the makeshift press, locating the square hollow section tubes at the top and bottom of the casting. Timber blocks should also be used to prevent damage and provide clearance for the shaft to exit. The rod with a point on the end of it is used to press on the end of the high-low gear shaft that is located in the bottom of the casting with the point located in the center drill mark to avoid it slipping off. We can now start to tighten the nuts on the end of the threaded rods. This should be done evenly and we'll slowly press the shaft out along with the bearings. Once the shaft is pressed out, the shaft will remain pinned within the casting. This is because the high load gear can't be removed without first removing the bottom bearing off the shaft. This can be done by locating the pointed rod back on the end of the shaft and tapping it out with a hammer. The bearing is supported by the high load gear as this is done, hopefully preventing damage to the bearing. This is the shaft once it's removed from the casting. The high load gear and bearing can now be removed from the inside of the casting. We can now fully see the damage to the low gear. This was caused by accidentally stalling the motor with my 50mm face mill as it was starting up. Here's the replacement gear sitting beside the damaged gear. I've also damaged a couple of these gears previously with the mill jumping out of gear. I eventually worked out this was because the high low gear knob locating spring had come loose. Before reassembly I checked the internal gear then greased the new gear ready to be installed. Before pressing the shaft back in, the bearings should be checked and replaced if damaged. The lower bearing can then be located, ready for the shaft to be pressed back in. The shaft can then be slid in and mated with the high-low gear. Make sure the keys are correctly located and the gear is the correct way up. At this point the makeshift press can be reinstalled, ready to press the shaft back in. At this point we also need the slug of steel turned to fit over the shaft and press the bearing back in. 
This will ensure force is evenly applied to the bearing as it's pressed in. Now the nuts can be tightened, quietly pressing the shaft in. Here we can see the bottom bearing as it presses in. Continue to tighten the nuts until both the top and bottom bearings are fully seated. Now the press can be removed. The high low shifting fork can then be reinstalled, followed by the shifter assembly. Then we're ready to reinstall the shifter knob. For mine, I've removed the sticker and cut a small hole through the metal sticker to allow the tension on the ball bearings to be adjusted. This also makes installation easier, allowing the ball bearings to be dropped in from the top rather than slid in underneath. And it was the covered set screw in this location that had come undone and damaged a couple of my previous gears. So I recommend the shift should be as tight as possible and Loctite used on the set screw. Now we're ready to check the gear shift and then reinstall the rear cover. The light in the bottom of the casting can then be reinstalled. Finally the head can be rotated back upright. The top bearing and internal circlip can then be reinstalled, followed by the nylon gear and its external circlip. The motor and motor mounting plate can then be reinstalled, taking care to thread all the wires through the motor plate as it's done. The speed sense can be reinstalled at this point if present. The motor mounting plate can then be fixed down. And the motor wiring reconnected. And the motor cover and quill handle can be reinstalled. power can then be reconnected and the motor tested. And that concludes this how to on changing a high low gear in a bench top mill. Thanks for watching and check out my series The Fell Engine Project where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive.